Joe. It'll take about a half hour to fill the rest of this order. Yeah, that's all right, Bob. Take your time. I'll be back in a little while. Right. Very tough to get three in a row. Ah, that's really remarkable shooting, though. <laughs> uh, you two fellas must be about the best gun hands in town, huh? Yeah, we're pretty good. Just one better. Stand right over there. Ah, uh, who's that? His name's Joe Cartwright. Hey, little Joe. Hi, Pete. Somebody over there I want you to meet. Uh, who is he? He says he's from St. Louis. His name's Fitz. I don't win. Hi, Joe. This is uh, little Joe Cartwright, Mr. Fitz. Oh, it's a pleasure, Mr. Cartwright. My pleasure. Nice to see you. I'll show you how it's really done. It's the best in the territory. Uh, uh, it'd be a privilege to see you in action, Mr. Cartwright. Uh, that is, if uh, you don't mind going along with an Easterner's whip. <laughs> you see, I, uh, I've always been fascinated by the West, especially the way you fellas handle your guns. Hey, go ahead, Joe. There's still three bottles left. That's what I call a real shoot. <laughs> well, I'd appreciate it if you let me buy you a drink, all of you. After a demonstration like that, I feel I owe you something. All right, you got a deal, but I'm buying. All right, whatever you say. Listen, I better get to the bank before it closes. Uh, don't forget to pick up those clothes at New Rope. Right, right. Hey, Paul, I'll meet you over at Silver Dollar. Little Joe promised to buy us a beer before we went home. And I don't want to let an opportunity like that get clean away. Neither do I. See you in about 20 minutes. Yes, sir, you boys sure know how to handle a gun. It was so fast, I couldn't even see it. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. much of a whiskey drink. Slows you down, huh? Yeah, to a crawl. I can understand how it'd be dangerous for a man like you. You need razor-sharp reflexes. <laughs> <laughs> you find that amusing, sir? You're a dude, aren't you, mister? I'm from St. Louis, yes, sir. Uh, from St. Louis, I guess that does make you a dude, all right. But these young men have been taking me in hand. They've been showing me how a six-gun is handled. Mister, you don't go to a kindergarten class to learn about a six-gun. Look, we're just having a nice, friendly beer here in a public bar. So why don't you go about your business, huh? Hey, you're a real tough kid, aren't you? Yeah, I get by. Go on. Show them how many notches you've got on your gun. Well, that's the way it's done, isn't it? One notch for every man that you've killed? Come on, how many notches do you have? Go ahead, kid. Show them how many notches you've got, huh? Don't you watch it, mister. Oh, you're a real tough kid, aren't you? Did you 
got a lesson to learn. Gentlemen, 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 please. Please, this, this bar is too crowded for any gunplay. Now, take your quarrel outside. All right. I'll meet you at the warehouse at the other end of town, where you bottle babies were playing. I'll be there tomorrow morning at 6.30. I'll be there. Good boy, Joe. You can take him easy. Sure, Joe. He's just another old son. Well, fan. you got yourself a real gunfight challenge, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> ah, but I suppose that doesn't bother a tough young rooster like you, huh? <laughs> just between the two of us, how many notches do you have on your gun? We will lay off that stuff now. Ah, uh, you don't want to brag, huh? Hey, you fellas, tell me. How many men has the kid got to his credit? Oh, how many is it now, Joe? Ten or eleven? Ten or eleven? Hey, that's really something. It's a wind's idea of a joke. A joke? Oh. Well, from the way you fellas were talking before, I thought... Oh, I see. All that uh, was just talk. What do you mean, talk? You've seen little Joe shoot? Oh, yeah, bottles, yes. But it's quite a different thing when your target can shoot back. Huh? Isn't that right, Mr. Cartwright? I'm willing to lay a little bet that Mr. Cartwright won't even show tomorrow morning. Why don't you shut your mouth? What's the matter with him? All I said was that I was willing to bet money that he wouldn't show at the fight tomorrow, that was all. Why don't you put money where your mouth is, mister? How's $5,000? Can you match it? I ain't got that kind of money. Well, how much you got? Hmm? All or any part? Yeah. 30 bucks? 30 bucks. Yes, sir. Uh, what's your name, sir? Uh, Sam Tucker's the name, friend. <laughs> well, I wonder if you'd mind holding the bet, Mr. Tucker, please. Why not? Be glad to. Now, that's $30 that little Joe doesn't show. Or if he does, that the other fellow takes him. Hmm? Anybody else want to get in on the action? Huh? I got $5,000 here. Hey, Who fish. wants to bet on... I'll take 50 on Joe Cartwright. All right, Pete. That's 50 on little Joe Cartwright. You heard? Heard what? Well, Joe's been challenged for the gunfight in the morning. What? That fella there is taking bets. Joe won't even show up. I don't understand it. Paul, I left him less than an hour ago. How could he get in so much trouble this quick? You're going to find that brother of yours and find out. Shut up. All right, here's that. Hey. of the 5,000. Mr. Tucker has all your bets written down. And the last this money goes for drinks on me. So step up. Let's go, Lord. I'll take a beer with you. I'll take Don't worry, honey. Business will pick up later tonight. Oh, no, no. I wasn't worrying about that. <laughs> Something else. That fell at the bar? Yeah. I knew him a long time ago. He didn't seem very happy seeing you. What's his name? Dan Taggart. I really don't know why I should even 
bother about it. I mean, after all, it's been a long time ago, and it's dead and forgotten. But, uh, I guess a girl never really forgets a man that she, that she knew when she was young, and... Does she, Martha? She does if she's got good sense. I need a black king. Well, not a thing, Paul. Boy, it just don't make sense. There's got to be some sort of mistake. Well, it has been a mistake, all right. It was your brother who made it. I'll use check and see if he's been to the general store. I'll, I'll ask down at the blacksmiths. Okay. Paul, there's got to be some sort of explanation. Let him make it. First of all, let's find him. Check in there. He ain't over there. You reckon he could have headed back to the ranch? Oh, I don't know. He certainly got this town on the floor. You know what that blacksmith wanted to do? What? You want to give me odds on the gunfight? You go up to the bank, see if he's there. I'll check into the warehouse. He should have been finished loading that wagon an hour ago. He should have been doing a lot of things this afternoon. All he succeeded in doing is getting himself into a peck of trouble. I'll meet you back here. Yes, sir. Well, I guess that's it, Joe. Right. Thank you. Right. What? I'm looking all over for you. Do you realize you have this whole town in an uproar? Do you know what's going on at the saloon? Yes, sir, I know. Well? Oh, it's just a little misunderstanding, that's all. Oh, just a little misunderstanding, that's all. A gunfight is a little misunderstanding. Now, what's it all about? Well, a fellow over in a bar gave me a hard time, and I... Lost my temper. You lost your temper? I'll, I'll take care of it. And how do you propose doing that? Well, I'll, go, I'll go over to the hotel and I'll apologize to him. All right. And as soon as you've done that, you get yourself up to the Ponderosa and stay there. Is that clear? Yes, sir, that's clear. I'll be home as soon as I can. Maybe I ought to go with you just to make sure. I can apologize to him alone, I promise, and I'll be home. Hey, Joe, we've been looking all over for you. You ought to see the action over at the Silver Dollar. Well, Sheriff Coffee would have a fit if you were here. Everybody in town's betting their pay on you. And one pull of that trigger boy can make us all rich. Why don't you two grow up? What do you mean, grow up? We bet our pay on you, Joe. Hey, uh, I mean, you are gonna show up, aren't you? No, I'm not gonna show up. You think I'll have a gunfight over nothing? But he challenged you and you said you'd meet him. So what? Well, like Pete said, we all got our pay on you. Right, fine. Maybe you two will know better next time. Hey, Joe, look. I mean, all the, you know, all your friends, the hands at the ranch, the people you know, they're all betting on you. You don't, you don't show up, and you know what they're gonna say. What, that I'm scared? Look, I don't have to prove anything to the people in this town. You still gotta live here. If you don't show up, you know people are gonna talk. And they're gonna say you're a coward. You know that that's what everybody's gonna say. Little Joe, you still around? I thought perhaps you would have deemed it uh, advisable to stay away from town for a few days. Uh, but uh, perhaps your friends inside are right. You do have courage. Just what's your game, Fitz? Game? Oh, uh, the bets. Yeah, the bets. Well, I just know a sure thing when I see it. A chance to pick up a little quick money, as they say. On uh, my life or the other man's? Now look, I didn't start the fight. You did. Uh, this code that uh, you all live by out here. That is very honorable, very noble, and very stupid. Why shouldn't someone make a good use of it? Well, there isn't going to be any fight. Fine. I win either way. And you lose either way. Yes, it's quite simple. Tomorrow afternoon I'll be on the stage to San Francisco. And you'll either be dead or... Disgrace. Good day, Mr. Cartwright.
Joe. Yes, sir. It's what I hear right. Uh, you're going to be in a gunfight? Who told you about that? It's all over town. Everybody's talking about it. I even put a few dollars on you myself. Yeah, you're a great big hero now, Joe. Look, Joe. I got something here you can use. Well, I've already got a holster, thanks. Joe. Not like this. I make it up special for some fella. Last year, he never come back to pick it up. I think maybe he got himself killed. <laughs> I'd let you have it for a very good price. No, thanks. Joe. This is special. It can't grab or bind. <laughs> it's got a spring inside. As soon as you touch the gun, it pushes it right up in your hand. It'll maybe give you an edge of half a second, Joe. I'm not interested. Joe, it could make all the difference in the world for just a few dollars. I told you I'm not interested. Yeah. Mr. Taggart? I wanted to talk to you. All right. Talk. Well, look, the whole thing had happened in a bar this afternoon. We both lost our tempers. Why don't we just call it that and forget it, huh? You trying to make a fool out of me, kid? Look, mister, I'm trying to square this thing. Now, it was just a spilled drink, nothing more. Certainly not worth a shooting. I made my play, boy. In public. I'll be at that warehouse in the morning. Oh, come on, this doesn't make sense. The whole thing is ridiculous. Is it? You may be willing to let this town call you a coward, boy. But I'm not. Nobody calls me a coward, mister. You just be there. Now beat it. What do you want? To see you. All right. You've seen me. Dan, may I come in? It's been a long time. Drink. You do drink. Or only, uh, only professionally. I drink when I'm asked, if I want to. Dan, they say that you're going to fight that boy. They're right. Why? Well, I like to fight. Well, what's happened to you? Look, I didn't ask you any questions, did I? We're ten years older. 20 years wiser, or are we? Why did you come up here? To talk for the kid? No. Look, just drink your drink and get out. And forget that you ever saw me again. Dan, look at me. It's too late. Now, just get out. I haven't 
forgotten a moment. I don't I don't know what you ever saw in me. Ever. I saw the most handsome man I ever knew. And the nicest. And I, I was you were beautiful, so beautiful. I remember the first time I ever saw you was at a church social with your ma and pa. You were hiding behind a, a great big caramel fudge cake, remember? That silly cake, how could I forget? What happened to us? Why didn't you come back? I was coming back, Sally. I was coming back with the Parsons. Your father's three hired guns met us. The Parson told me to, to leave. At least until he had a chance to talk to your pa. Well, I rode. I rode for two days trying to lose him. But they followed. When I hit a town, I, I got drunk real drunk. That night I killed my first man. After that, how could I come back? With a posse on my neck? Oh, dear, I didn't know. I didn't know. I heard about you. And how you're and the whole town chased you out like you was, like you was an animal. Dane, the town didn't matter. None of that mattered to me. I, I just wanted you. I, I looked for you. I looked all over for you. I, I couldn't find you. You. I looked for you too, Sally. I looked, and the more I couldn't find you, the more I, or the more I drank, and the more I killed. Dan, don't. It's over. Is it? Then why are you here? Why are you here like this? Painted up like that? Dressed like that? Why am I here? Don't you see what we've become? Dan, I love you. I've always loved you. And I've waited. Sally, I wish, I wish we could. No. Oh, Sally. Hey, Jill. You talk to that fella? Yeah, I talked to him. Well, what do you say? I'd rather not talk about it now. What do you mean you'd rather Come on, not? Let me alone, Lee Joe! Joseph! He didn't feel like talking, boy. He went up to bed. Oh? Did he talk to that fella in town? Yeah, but I don't think he had much success from the way he acted. Oh, well, we'll just find out. Joseph? Did you uh, talk to that fellow in town? Yeah, I talked to him. Well, what did he have to say? He wouldn't accept my apology. I have no choice now. You have no choice? What does that mean? You have no choice except to go into town and get yourself killed tomorrow morning? Yeah, that's right. Well, what kind of sense does that make? Well, it doesn't make sense. None of it makes sense. But what do you want me to do? Just turn and walk away from it? Yes, just turn and walk away from it. That takes courage, too. There's no dishonor in that. I can't do that. You can't. Do you realize what those so-called friends of yours are doing in town? They're placing money bets on your life. Oh, that's got nothing to do with it. Now, you listen to me, young man. I don't want you to have anything to do with it. Just forget the whole thing. I'm a little old to be talked to like that. Then act your age. 
You stay here tomorrow. He'll ride out of town and the whole thing will be forgotten. Is that understood? So what happened, Bo? What happened? There's not going to be any gunfight. That's what happened. This was 30 years ago, and I was little Joe. I know what I'd be doing tomorrow. Yeah. I know what you'd be doing too, Paul. That, that's what makes that rub so tough, ain't it? You'd be going through with it. Yeah, foolish as it might be, I'd be gone. I was just up there telling him that he couldn't go. Five years ago, I locked the door on him. Kept him in his room. I treated him like a child. He's a man. And I'm afraid for him. I'm afraid for him too, Paul. He's your son. But he's my brother. Hey, Paul. How would it be if... If I went up and talked to him. You could try. I will. Let's go get some sleep, huh? I'll be up in a bit. Yes, sir. Good night, Paul. Come in. Yeah, come on. I was just downstairs talking to Paul. He seemed pretty upset. Yeah, I know. I thought I'd come up and see if he wanted to talk. I guess everything's been said that there is to talk about. Yeah. That fella really rode you pretty hard, huh? Yeah, he sure did. Well, that burned it. I don't know how you feel. Man just naturally hates to get his pride hurt. But that burning Joe, it ain't worth getting killed over. No more lectures. Huh? I've been through that already tonight. Hey, maybe if I went into town and got my hands on that Yahoo, he wouldn't be so happy to get himself in a gunfight, huh? Yeah, bro, that's all I need to have you go in town fight my battles for me. That'd really fix me up. Dad burning Joe, you... You're my little brother. If anything was to happen to you, I'd... Yeah, don't worry. Nothing's gonna happen to me. You mean, you might not go through with it? I just don't know yet. I gotta... Gotta think on it a little while. You can say that, can't you? Yeah, Dad Barnett, I can see it. I can understand it. But I don't like it none. Thanks. For what? For being my brother.
Don't they ever go home? It's pay night. At midnight. Yes. Don't. Not yet. Pay night is a big night, Dan. Don't. I don't like hearing you talk that way. I have to live. Like that? Isn't there anything else you could do? I took what I could get. Stop it. I don't want you to go down there. With those drunken pigs. Sally. Don't leave. I don't want to be alone. Stay with me. Oh, Dan. Just talk to me. Sally. It's daylight. Oh, Dan. Is it time? Shh. Oh, Dan. Oh. You'd better go now. Oh, please, Dan, don't. I'll be leaving town in about an hour. One way or, or the other. I don't want you out there. Do you understand? No. no. <laughs> You're still so beautiful.
Who's the girl? That's none of your business. You've been up all night again, haven't you? Probably boozing it up with that shut up. What's gotten into you, Taggart? You know you're getting jumpier every day. I'll tell you what's gotten into me. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of me. And of the stinking things I do. Sick, huh? I just remember what you were when I picked you up in Denver. At least I was clean. Clean? You were a two-bit gunfighter turning yourself into a bottle of booze. Someday I'm gonna put a fist right in that mouth of yours. Or a bullet through that fat skull. Now, just take it easy, Taggart. You get everything you want. You got all the money you need. You got an easy life. All I have to do is commit murder for it. Do you know what it's like killing a man? You think it gets easier, don't you? You're a coward, Fitz. You've never faced a man in your life. <laughs> Talking to you is like, it's like a rabbit trying to explain speed to a snail. Kid came up here last night. Trying to square it. Came to me trying to square it. Imagine that. Poor kid. He's gonna get killed just to make you richer. You better watch out, Taggart. Or it might be you. If you don't stop building that stuff. Yeah, you're right. Could be me someday. Some night, some ugly morning. I'm gonna meet some punk kid who's gonna take me. That'll be the end of it. Every crummy little town's got a boot hill for bums like you and me. Decent people, one place. Bums in Boot Hill. Rocks instead of flowers. Oh, don't worry, Harry. I'm gonna shoot that Cartwright kid as straight and as fast as I can. you have to pick that Cartwright kid. One of those other two would have been just as good. More like the usual loudmouth Claude you always get. Because that Cartwright kid has quite a following. Made it easier to take their money. Yeah, maybe a lot easier than it'll be to take him. You don't really think he'll show, do you? He'll show pride. Pride, that's what does it. That's what roped me in. The great Code of the West. Face your man or sell out your self-respect. Yeah, that's what gets us all. Well, don't tear it down. It's made us a lot of money, you as well as me. The only difference is that I do the killing. 610. You better let me be there for five minutes before you show.
morning, Mr. Taggart. Well, gentlemen, little Joe Cartwright has just three minutes before he forfeits. Three minutes, gentlemen. Hey, Fitz, what's he trying to do? What? That is not the same gun rig he was wearing yesterday, pal. You'll have to ask him, friend. I just take the bets. And you're about to forfeit the whole thing. Two and a half minutes, gentlemen. There he is. There's Joe Cartwright. Give my 400. You think it was really worth it? He sat down to write a poem. One about life and things. One that would tell and shriek and yell. One that would soar and sing. He would mention his mind and, and the trees and the sea. And his heart and his girl and their love. He'd define what was good, what was bad, what was odd, and add a coda to God. So, he thought and he pondered upon all these things till his being rumbled with fear. So, he put down his pen, lit a cigarette, then 
ended his poem right here. Burn it, Mr. Smith, how do you keep all them poems in your head straight like that? I mean, you've been going on like this for a couple hours. <laughs> Just a simple accident of nature, Mr. Cartwright. Like warts. <laughs> who, uh, who wrote this one? An ancient druid priest. Name of Kaliwabbles. Who was foully slain by a pack of rabid suffragettes. for the inner man. <laughs> Neath the weeds and the wild berries, near the barren praying trees, past that gash of a road by my home, stood the deafness first strike you, friend? Look, mister, I've been putting up with your stuff for near an hour now. That's long enough, I'd say. Then you don't plan to cease playing that machine. No, I don't. Uh, in that case, I shall strike you so hard that you will have to remove your boots to brush your teeth. Here, have a drink. You got in here? Here? Yeah. Oh, I just got a little food I'm taking out the barn. Has your horse developed a fondness for peach pie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, this ain't for my horse. It's uh, it's for a feller I met in town. I what, you put him up in the barn? Well, yeah, he was sort of sick, see, Paul. I... Of course, we always put sick people up in the barn. Well, he ain't exactly sick. You see, he uh, he had a little too much to. To eat. That's it. He overate. He ah. ate too much. Yeah. And that's why you're bringing him some more food. Ain't doing too well, am I? Not so far. <clears throat> well, the truth of the matter is, Paul, he had a little too much to drink. Ah. Uh -huh. No, the truth of the matter is, he had a way too much to drink. He's drunk. Oh, yes. Cost oh, you. Why do you always have to turn this place into a. A home for grown-up foundlings. Well, Paul, I couldn't just leave him in town. Well, of course you couldn't leave him in town. Anytime some fellow runs into town and gets himself roaring drunk, it becomes your responsibility. Right? Well, it does if I bought him some of it. 
Oh, boy, it was perfectly innocent. I, I just bought him a couple of drinks while he was reciting. While he was reciting? Well, he, he wasn't exactly reciting. He was, he was telling me what a good hand he was. That's what he was doing. Uh, and I remember you telling us that we needed a new hand. Oh, wait a minute. You didn't hire him. Well, Paul, he had, he had awful good references. Well, so far, the only references I've heard is that he gets drunk. Oh, boss, I, honestly, I... Well, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to try him out anyway. Well, I'll, uh, I'll just take this one out. There's tomorrow. one good thing about the whole situation, though. At least he's a ranch hand. He's not one of those other strays that you're always bringing home. Yeah. My little red riding hood, how kind of you not to forget your old granny. <laughs> There's some good chicken in here for you. You didn't bring a bottle? Look, Mr. Smith, we gotta sober you up. Why? Because you got a job here, that's why. I have a what? Well, you, you're broke, you ain't got no money, so you must need a job. I don't know how to do anything on a ranch. You learn. Why are you so interested in me? Well, I sort of back myself into a corner, I reckon. I'm sort of committed to you. What will I have to do? Well, the first thing you got to do is sober up. Go and try some of that chicken. It's good. Mm. Don't you have anything to drink? Yep. Yeah. Assassin! <laughs> Don't you know you can kill a man like that? Well, there's one thing for dang sure work ain't gonna kill you. I, uh... What happened was I, I had to move into the shade because I felt a sunstroke coming on. Yeah, I imagine a hundred-proof sunstroke must be pretty rough stuff. Now, look, we're not paying you to sleep, you know. Joe, you heard him. He said he felt a sunstroke coming on. What, you gonna believe that? Well, I don't see any reason why not to. Rather remind me to talk to you about the Easter Bunny sometime. Uh, your faith in human nature is refreshing. Your uh, brother seemed to think I was lying. Come on, Will. 
Let's face it, let's be honest. You got a hangover that's longer than a 20-foot log on a 10-foot buckboard. Well, if you think that, well, why I'll did you... Well, I'll tell you, my friend. I, I just got a feeling that somewhere mixed in with all that booze and baloney, there's a man. You're taking a lot for granted, aren't you? Maybe I am. Last night in the Silver Dollar Saloon, you were a man. Oh, you were all liquored up all right, but you knew what them words was about. You knew what they meant and why. So I figure somewhere in that frame, there's enough of a man that it's worth the trouble. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, Will. I'm gonna sit down right over there, and I'm gonna watch you. Chop that stump down to size if it takes all day and all night. Get the chopping. Go on. No one told me that the tree stumps on the Ponderosa were made out of stone. Better get a move on, Smith. That's supper. Now, don't mention food to me. I'll eat your share. you limb from limb. Be reasonable, Draves. All I want is, is a little sip. That's all. Just a steady... That's my bottle. You took it from my saddlebag. Please, Draves. Hand it over, Smith. what you're looking for? That's mine, Mr. Cartwright. He took it from my saddlebag. Is that true? Well, is it true? Yes! You be sure you're off the Ponderosa by morning. You don't know how bad it can get. Yeah. I reckon I don't will, but I know how bad you can get now, don't I? of man. One rises from his chair 
and confirms the affirmation. <laughs> well, if you would stop and think about it, you'd realize that there has to be a certain trust between human beings. No more credit. But in a healthy economy, there has to be a certain amount of give and take. All right. A poem, then. Now, that's another thing you and me better get straight. I heard enough of your poems to last me forever. But if you would just allow me to... Look, rum bum, get out. I'm sick of you. No ape is going to dictate terms to me. Yeah. I'll swindle you with it. Get out of here. Get him out of here. Man's affirmation. Get my hands off me. You fool. You go ahead with your laughing. Come on, Will. Oh. I'm not drunk, Hoss. I'm just dying. Some people refuse to accept the fact that the human brain was never meant to be pickled in alcohol. Yeah. He is going to be all right, though, ain't he, Doc? Man's got the constitution of a horse. And if he keeps on drinking, he'll have the lifespan of one also. Let's see. Oh, I'll need his name for the prescription. Yeah, it's Will Smith, I think. Not according to this. William Warlock Evans? Evans? There's a letter addressed to him from San Francisco from a Mrs. Lydia Evans. They're going to be his wife? That couldn't be the one that's a poet, could it? I don't know. I never heard of him. William Warlock Evans is one of the most gifted young poets this country's got. Do you suppose that's him in there? You know, Doc, it just could be. As a matter of fact, I'll bet you it is. Damnation! Damnation! I'm stripped in a buff! Hey, Will, come on. Hey, lay down, buddy. Hey. Relax, relax, come on. Stop thrashing about here. Come on, relax, Will. Lay down. Lay down and relax, buddy. Come Stay on, down. come on. Say that. Where do you think I could go dressed like this? You're feeling dizzy? No, this is the way I always talk. Well, 
I've got some sad news for you, my friend. You're going to have to stop drinking. What did it take you all eight years of medical school to figure that out? Boss, I'll leave Mr. Evans' prescription down with Matt Graber. All right. You can pick it up there. Yes, sir. You know, I always felt there was a certain resemblance between doctors and bartenders. They both strive to remove pain. Then they restore the agony with a bill. <laughs> Oh, if they were going to be fair about it. What did he call me? He called you Mr. Evans. Mr. Evans? What are you going to do? I don't know. I can tell you what I'd like to do. I'd... I'd like to take you back to the Ponderosa and drag you out. Why? I don't know. Maybe I'm a sucker, but I got a notion that a man like you is worth it. And as soon as we got you on your feet again, we can get a hold of your wife and get her out here. No! What do you think I'm running from? Look, I'd, I'd rather burn in hell through all eternity than to spend one second with that woman. Well, that's, that's sort of up to you, Will. Hey, your father wouldn't take me back anyway. I'm a convicted thief, drawn and quartered. Yeah, but once he finds out who you are... No one is to know who I am. I mean that. I've carried the burden of being William Warlock Evans too long. Now, you still think you can get me that job back? I don't know. But we can try. Well, so far, you haven't given me one valid reason. Oh, boy, I just think he needs help, that's all. No, he needs help, all right. I think we're all in agreement with that. Hoss, I, I don't want to appear hard. Oh, Paul, I know your point, but that Bernard, I got one, too. It, it, it's easy to explain as yours, but, boy, if you'd have seen him out there today when I picked him up, you'd know what I was talking about. You want to hire him? All right. You hire him. You pay him. You'll be responsible for him. Yes, sir. He's out there in the bookhouse. I think I'll go tell him right now. The boy's just too easy going for his own good. I agree with you, Pye. You're absolutely right. He's got that silly notion about trying to help people. I just don't know where he gets it from. Your food's getting cold. <laughs> it looks like wood. It feels like wood. <laughs> But it saws like iron. <laughs> well, how am I doing, Professor? Well, I'll tell you, Will, you get a you get an A for effort. But I'll have to give you an F for results. Let me show you something. Here. Don't fight it so. Don't use just your arms. Get your whole body in it. Get you a nice rest. Look at that. Well, I admit it's worked so far, but I don't think that two weeks is going to change Will all that much. You said yourself that he's packing his share of the load now, Paul. Well, sure, that's because he doesn't stop to quote poetry every time a leaf falls off a tree. 
Yeah, I don't know if that's altogether good either. Well, I'll tell Charlie we'll pick the rest of this stuff up next week. Yeah. Are you Mr. Ben Cartwright? Yes, ma'am. Can I help you? I am Mrs. William Evans. Yes, Mrs. Evans. I've been making inquiries, and I have reason to believe that my husband is one of your employees. Evans. William Evans. Well, ma'am, we have a we have a, a William Smith and a, we have a, a Bill Perkins. And Paul, it's Will Smith that you's talking about. Ma'am, I'm I'm Horse Cartwright. And Will is out on the Ponderosa, yes. Will Smith is really William Warlock Evans, Paul. The poet? I I, th I thought he was dead. He is. In more ways than you can imagine. You tell Will that the game's over. I found him. I'm at the hotel. You can bring him there. Oh, ma'am, uh, we can take you to him. I've come this far, Mr. Cartwright. Now he has to come to me. back so soon. You didn't expect me to finish in two hours, I hope. That ain't why I'm here, Will. You know, I used to always sneer at writers who wrote about the joy of work and nature. But after the day, I don't think I'll sneer anymore. <laughs> I'll throw rocks. Will, what I, what I came to tell you was your wife's in town. She wants to talk to you. Did you send for her? Certainly not. Don't lie to me. I ain't lying to you. I ain't never lied to you, have I? I'm getting out of here. I'm taking that horse. Will. Will. You run if you must. But you ain't stealing my horse, you hear? Well, you ain't gonna stop me. I trusted you like I trusted her. And you both betrayed me. Well, I'm getting out of here. Go ahead, kill me. Will, I don't know what that woman done to you, but... Why don't you kill me? I'm begging you. You're a man. A man will beg. <laughs> They don't surrender either. I'm surprised he took your horse. That's a new low, even for Will. I don't rightly know what got into him, ma'am. He simply reverted to type. He ran. Well, the direction he headed up toward those mountains, there's only one town up there. A few Mexican families and a little cantina. We could be up there in no time. Did you? Tell Will that I was here. Yes, I did. And you don't have the heart to tell me it was that bad, wasn't it? Whatever he said was foul and violent, and then he left. He ran. Well, ma'am, it wasn't that, that Will didn't want to face you. It was he can't face himself, don't you see? Well, I am tired of chasing after Will. I have followed Will through more dirty little towns than I can name. And for so long that it's, it's almost a habit. Well, well, habits can, can be broken. Ma 
ma'am. Ma'am, I, I don't know what went on between you and Will, but... No. No, you do not. That's why you're willing to go after Will, to try to help him again. Well, I won't go after Will. I, I can't do it anymore. Oh! gave it to me on our fifth wedding anniversary. A golden brooch to match the golden light in your eyes, he said. So, you see, Hoss, things haven't always been like this with Will and me. But that time is over, and I'm going to forget about Will. And I advise you to do the same. Ma'am, can you do that that easy? Easy? I never said it was easy. Um, I... I have a lot of packing to do. Would you... would you excuse me, please? Yes, ma'am. Plays like a fallen angel, doesn't he, my friend? They say Miguel was born with a guitar in his hand. Uh, <laughs> Talent is a curse. An albatross slung around the neck like the last banner of defeat. <laughs> it enhances the thirst, my friend. You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? No, senor. My friend, of all the creatures in the world, man is the unhappiest. And yet you smile. Why? I enjoy being alive. Let's straight to that. Don't you think you've had enough, senor? There's never enough until there's oblivion to life. May it last forever. Yes! May it keep us all warm. Salud, senor. Would... Would you mind if I lowered my head for a moment to rest my eyes? I feel suddenly quite ready to pull down the curtain. Senor! 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 Senor. Jesus, you in there? Estamos cerrados. We're all closed up. Jesus, it's me, Hoss Cartwright. Oh, senor. Un minuto. 
Buenas noches, Miguel. Buenas noches, Jos. Well, figures. First saloon he came to. Is he a friend of yours, senor? Yeah, he's a friend. He stole my horse. There is a lot of sadness in this man. See how he sleeps like a baby. You want to take him home? No. Might as well let him sleep as long as he can. You got a place to keep him? See the back room. Good. If he wakes up before I get back, you keep him here, even if you have to hit him with a club, you hear? Don't worry, he won't wake up. Miguel, ayúdame. The bags are right over. I hate to bother you again, Miss Evans. But you found Will. Yes, sir. Did you tell him that I was leaving? Well, I couldn't. You see, he was asleep. He was drunk, wasn't he? Yes, sir. Well, why did you come here? Why couldn't you let me go in peace? Well, that's just it, ma'am. I figured if I let you leave now that you'd never know another minute's peace the rest of your life because you still love him. Can a woman love insults and threats and tantrums? No, ma, I reckon not, but she can love the good she finds in the man and try to help him. I have tried. What else can I do? Well, try once more. Do you think it's really worth another try? Isn't it always? Come to help you, Will. <laughs> Aren't I lucky to have such a conscientious little mother? Yep. I'd say you were at that, Will. Well, look at her. Standing there, the, the symbol of martyrdom. And she glories in it. Don't you have anything to say to me, my love and keeper? <laughs> you see? She's dumb, literally, as well as figuratively. Well, I'm gonna say something, Will. I'm getting pretty fed up with you picking this woman apart when all she's trying to do is... No. That's exactly what he wants. Someone to argue with. Someone to attack. No! Listen to the woman! It's the truth, Will. And you know it. This is the way you keep me from getting close to you, with ridicule and insults just so I won't see how frightened you are. Frightened? Me? <laughs> Dear girl, and that's a charitable term if I ever heard one. 
I am William Warlock Evans, and I happen to possess a writing talent commonly acknowledged by all. And there's not one thing in this whole flaming world that frightens me. Except William Warlock Evans. She's talking in riddles. She's talking a lot of sense, Will. Oh, and that's your considered opinion? Yeah. Yes, it is. And I'll tell you something else that's my considered opinion. No question about it, Will. You're a great writer. But you're something else, too. You're pathetic. Fire! Even a marionette has more guts than I do. Get him to the table. Come on, Will. Come on. can't fight it any longer, Will? Well, I can't fight it for you. So we'll forget that we are husband and wife and we'll be married to this. I can't pull you out of the gutter, so I'll just crawl right in with you. To William Warlock Evans and his memory. Lydia, no. Don't do that. You don't care what happens to yourself. What do you care what happens to me? For the rest of your life, Will, I'm going to be right with you. Glass for glass and bottle for bottle. I'm going to be a mirror that you can't escape. A twisted, warped image. What I've had to live with all these years. Why do I do this to you, Lydia? What, what kind of a man am I? you can call a man is a million years in one shape. Remember that, Will? Did you ever finish it? I can't finish it! Don't you understand that? I burned out. I'm a shell of an artist. Why can't you see that? Why can't you see it? That flame you had inside you, it's still there. You still got it. You're just too close to it, that's all. You really believe that, don't you? The whole world believes it, Will. That's what we're trying to tell you. Why? Why do you bother with me? After what I've done to you. Because I love you. It's as simple as that. Take my hand, Will. Maybe it's worth a try. Another try, Lydia. It always is. <laughs> 